Hello and welcome to the old Lumens channel again. Today I'm going to play around with a battery pack and see what kind of batteries I can get out of it. This is one that was in a thread in the BLF. It's uh, supposed to be an OEM battery for uh, Acer 5200 MA. Uh, supposed to be an, an OEM replacement BT.00607.074 uh, It came from eBay uh, and it came just like this in the package it was in a uh, uh, just a regular padded envelope <clears throat> uh, first class so I'm going to open it up and uh, take a look at it and see what it's going to take to get the batteries out now um, okay, I'm just looking to see if it really looks like an OEM replacement or not. Um, you know, I'm betting, de well, definitely assembled in China. Um, and, uh, you know, it may be called OEM replacement, but I doubt it's the real OEM replacement. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't think so, though. Anyways, I see a lot of labels on it, and uh, I can see the seam all the way around it here. Uh, we're going to see if that seam is glued or snap fit or what it is. I'm going to take a look at that here in a, in a couple of minutes, but first thing I'm going to do is, in order to get to the seam, I'm going to remove all the labels. As far as removing the labels, uh, you can use your fingernail, or I'm just using a uh, razor blade knife, or I'm going to try to use a razor knife. To get underneath the label and start lifting it up and then hopefully it should pull right off yeah pulls off good enough okay so I'm gonna do that with all the labels on this thing okay so all the labels are removed so that I can see the whole seam all the way through a um, bunch of labels there yeah. Just in, in the feel and, and look of this and looking at the seam, you know, I wonder if this thing is really glued or if it's not just a snap fit. Um, so I'm going to sort of take a look and see if it might just be a snap fit to begin with and see whether it is or not. And uh, I'll do that and then, uh, you know, I'll come back and show you what, I'm, what I've accomplished or not accomplished. Okay, I've done a little bit of prying with a screwdriver and uh, haven't gotten a lot of success as yet. I don't, I, it may be glued or it may be snapped together where you can't take it apart. But I've pried here where the uh, contacts go and I can see the, the little board in there for the contacts. Uh, and I see a metal piece behind that and then looks like the batteries. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of cutting with uh, clippers here, just in this section because I don't think I'll hurt the batteries. I think that's all just the circuit in there. So I'm going to try to do a little clipping in there and see if I can't get it opened up a little more. Okay, so all I've been doing is I've been using a pair of clippers and I'm staying right at the upper edge because I know there's a board in here. Okay, and it connects all the batteries together and uh, I don't want to short anything out so I'm just trying to, to do a little clipping with a pair of clippers uh, wire clippers to get a little idea of what we have in there uh, remember that this, and I'm doing this from the standpoint I've never touched one of these before and I know that I don't want to short lithium batteries out so what I think is there's enough space that I could run a hacksaw right across this top edge okay and cut that I could also do that with a hot knife uh, which I'm debating of which way I want to do it um, maybe the hot knife possibly it's an option anyways so I think I'm going to cut that whole section first and then go from there okay what I'm doing is I'm using a razor blade knife and I'm getting right along the Hang on a second. I'm getting right along this edge seam here and I'm going to do some razor blade knife cutting and see what happens. I'm going to not try I'm not trying to cut all the way through in one, you know, one time. I'm just going to cut lightly 
and continue to cut lightly until I can break it free and then see where this goes. Okay. Well, I'll continue to do that for a minute here. Okay, so I use that razor blade and I cut along both sides of the section that has the, the uh, circuitry in it. Okay, and I haven't cut through any of the, any of the wires or damaged this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead now and cut the wires so that the batteries, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any shorting, uh, most likely that way. Okay, so I'm just going to cut each individual terminal, um, and uh, go from there. Okay. Okay, so the circuit's out of the way. I can see the batteries now, and I'm going to start working on the rest of this seam. And I think I'm going to possibly continue on with a razor knife. I'm not 100% sure yet. I can see space where I could cut in here and not hit the batteries, but I don't know what I'm going to be like on the other side. So I think that's the way I'm going to approach it is with that razor knife. Okay, so what I did was I cut along here, like I showed you already, all the way along this seam, and then I cut at the very edge on both ends. Now I cut where I was just above the battery, so I cut, I didn't cut through the seam, but I cut at the very edge, just enough to allow me to hinge this. Okay, cut the very edge here, and and I can pull the rest of it off. That worked out fairly well. That allows me to get to the batteries. So from here I think I can get these things out. Now there we go. That's pretty simple. Alright, now here's our six batteries. They are Samsung's ICR 18650s. Uh, ICRs, aren't they a different voltage than uh, IMRs and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not sure about that, so I gotta look. But uh, anyways, now it's gonna be a matter of cleaning up these batteries and separating them and seeing what we got with them. Okay, so all the all the connections have a clear tape on them. Every every connection has a piece of clear tape on it. That clear tape is basically just like Scotch tape. All right. So I'm, I've removed all that scotch tape, then I can see my, my connections here. All right, I'll do, and, and I'm going to have to separate batteries, which I'm going to cut them apart. All right. Um, now this white stuff that uh, was all over them, this comes up really easily with a fingernail, just like that. I mean, I don't know, maybe this is a fresh battery and that's why, but it's not hardened up. And uh, it comes off with a fingernail really easily. Now you can see already that this um, uh, battery is puckered up where the, the uh, insulation is around the, the wrapper. So I'll probably have to change that wrapper out. Uh, I may try and heat with my heat gun and see if it, it shrinks back down again, but I may have to change it out. So the next thing is going to be cutting these batteries apart, and I'll see how I'm going to do that here in a minute. All right, these batteries, are, you know, are, are in... Uh, series parallel and uh, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do like to take each section of two off I'm just gonna bend the clip several times until it breaks off I believe uh, we'll see here real quick and see if it if that works I just want to get these apart maybe I'll just cut them uh, with my clippers yeah there we go so I'm gonna get packs of two uh, and then I gotta work on cutting them off all right okay so now i have my two packs here and all i'm all i'm doing is i i have a pair of uh, wide nose clippers and i've just pried off the uh clip that's on there the the, the soldered tab and then i'll clean that off probably with a dremel i imagine or i may clean it off okay so as i'm saying i'm using this pair of wide jaw nippers or uh, 
pliers and I'm just taking and using it sort of like a can opener you know just a, like a sardine can and, and pull back okay and uh, get another bite and pull back again all right and that leaves me four tabs right there which I'll hit with a probably a Dremel with a sanding disc on it all right and I'll show you one more time again for what I'm doing here like I say I have this wide nose pair of pliers I've got a tab here I've got, I get right to the base of the tab where the first two welds are there's four welds peel back until I feel those two come off then I take and, and get get again right up tight against the next two welds and just peel back okay that way I'm not ripping as much straight off I'm sort of just you know peeling off sideways and the pliers themselves help to keep from uh, damaging anything and you can see the just four little nubs there that'll be cleaned off and again with all with this white stuff that's on here I'm just taking my fingernail and I'm just scrubbing that white stuff off okay and then I'm going to use either some alcohol or some goop uh, to take off the residue okay so I have an old can of Goo Gone Extreme Remover for glue, marker, oil, lipstick, ink, pen, wax, crayon, tar grease <laughs> and etc so anyways anyways I'm going to try that out and see if it works I just have a paper towel uh, I'm going to put a little bit on there and then I'm going to see what that does as far as taking off this residue uh, let's see yeah, it's taking the residue off. Looks like it's taking most all of it off, and it doesn't look like it's hurting the uh, wrapper. So I'll go ahead and do that with all these batteries, and then I'm going to try the heat shrink gun, which is my hair dryer, to see if I can get these batteries shrunk back down in the spots on the bad spots on the wrap. Okay, so at least three three of my batteries, maybe more, have uh, puckered wrappers because of that uh, white stuff and sticking to the case so I have a uh, I have a hair dryer and uh, I'm gonna see if I can't shrink those back up again Well, looks like it came out pretty good. Still have a little residue on there to clean off, uh, which I was waiting till that, that pucker was out of there so I wouldn't ruin a, the wrapper. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, not bad at all. Pretty darn good, doggone good. So I'll go ahead and do that to the rest of the batteries. Okay, so I have a Dremel tool and um, I put three batteries in the vise, just lightly in the vise, just to hold. And I have a Dremel with a, a grinding, or not a grinding wheel, but a sanding wheel on it. I'm going to try that and see how it uh, works. I've tried one, and, and it's, I mean, it's going to leave some roughness, but uh, it seemed to work okay. You just got to have a very, very light touch. So let's see what it's like. I got it on a very low setting, two speed. Okay, as you can see, just a really light touch to uh, get them, and I don't want to go too deep naturally. I have my soldering set up, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, a little bit of a button on these, and I'll show you that too. I didn't even tell you what these were, probably. These are ICR 186526Cs Samsung SDI 2A11 and then underneath it you know you can see some other numbers on the actual cell itself underneath and they're not all the same they're all all over the place um, the voltages ran from 1.96 volts to 2.2 volts um, you know to me I, you know I probably wouldn't buy any more uh, laptop batteries 
I think 1.96 is probably too low. Uh, I'm going to charge them, but uh, there's a variation in cells there from uh, 1.96 up to 2.25, 2.26, and and uh, I don't really care for that, and I don't like the fact that they're, they're that low. Now, maybe it's fine. You know, I'm not an expert on lithium-ion cells. Uh, anyways, once this heats up, I'll show you how I'm going to put a button on these. All right, let's see what we can do here. I, uh, soldering iron should be warmed up by now. I'm going to use a bunch of uh, uh, flux, quite a bit of it. I'm going to cover the whole top with flux. Um, some people might say too much flux, but that's the way I do it. I got some 6040 rosin core solder. Uh, it's uh, the thicker stuff, 062 diameter. My iron should be hot, and I'll just wipe off the end of the iron a little bit here, and then I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, usually I burn the, the plastic because I put the iron down too. There we go. See that flux just puts that bead right on there. Okay, you see, that's all it takes right there. Real fast, doesn't take too long at all. I don't preheat, I just use a hot iron. My iron is set, it's just a, a variac and it's set almost on max at 450. Uh, so it's probably about 400. And uh, I just put it on there and run that solder. Run a big bead of it, get it around the whole thing like that. And uh, that should be it, right there. Okay, and the very last thing after I've soldered is I'll take a paper towel with some alcohol on it and I'll clean the flux off of here with the alcohol and wipe these down. Don't have any extra excess flux showing. Cleans off pretty good with alcohol. I do that with all of them and then it's time to charge these things up and see how they do okay I got four cells plugged in into my uh, bastardized i4 charger and and I say that because I you know tried putting a fan in it and ended up the fan worked about a day really nice until it blew up so now it's just got a gaping hole in it but hey now it gets airflow huh so anyways we'll see what it does with the i4 and see how well they charge up and I'll let you know I still I have to go back and look. I still think ICRs are supposed to be charged at a higher voltage, but I don't have anything to charge them with if that's the case. So, anyways, that's uh, that's the end of it. If they work out good, then you know, for twelve dollars and a couple hours worth of work, uh, you end up with a half dozen batteries, uh, a half dozen eighteen six fifties. Thanks for watching.